Hey, Martina. Thanks for joining. Thank you. I really, I really can't sway. I want, I, I really want to because the song is really good. But my phone goes out of focus. I'm feeling just fine. And it took me a minute to talk myself into coming on tonight. I, I know I need to. Um, but um, I feel fine. Other than the fact that the side of my face is not, um, it's, it's a little better, but it's not, it's still not, um, back to normal yet. So, just keep on believing. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, I have to. I mean, it's. It's built in me. So, um, I really didn't have a purpose for coming on here. Most of the time, when I come on a live broadcast... Amen. Uh, I don't have a specific subject most of the time. I don't, um... I just don't. But, um... I just came on um, just to share and to say, you know, uh, just because you get something from the doctor saying something doesn't mean that everything is lost, although the enemy tried that with me this week, um, doesn't mean that you're going to not be able to do what God's called you to do or be who, you, who he's called you to be or that all of a sudden because you have this diagnosis, you no longer are uh, in line for the promises that he's had for you since the beginning of time. I mean, you know, the the real trick here is is not believing the lies of the enemy. So Monday, I'm just going to tell the story. Well, actually, let me just start. I'll start at the beginning of this story. Um, Friday, I was at a friend's house, and we were... Um, we were just hanging out. Uh, there's a, some of us ladies, uh, my pastors, a couple of my pastors, uh, Pastor Kim and Pastor Jordan were there, and just a couple of different ladies from the church, and we were just together talking and sharing. Um, and I noticed while I was telling a story that all of a sudden the side of my face was just not responding the way that it normally does. And so you can see it. It's not... Um, there, there's, uh, the fact that I can lift this side a little bit is is a positive thing. Anyway, uh, so I noticed it, but I didn't really think anything of it, and I just kind of was like, well, maybe it'll go away, you know. Um, and so I was like, well, I'll wait and see, and if it doesn't go away, you know, then I'll go in and get seen. Well. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I mean, I hightailed it out of church. I didn't stop really to talk to anybody. I didn't want to smile at anyone because I just didn't want to bring attention to myself. And in the meantime, I was praying and rebuking and, you know, everything that you can do. Um, and then Monday, I called into the nurse's line, and they were concerned that it might be a stroke. Well, then, I, I didn't still let... I still was fighting the fear... And, um, this eye randomly waters because it's affected by that, so that's really great. Um, and so I went in at the advice of the nurse's line. Excuse me. Whew, I shouldn't be tired. Anyway, um, I went in and, uh, they determined that it was not a stroke. It was Bell's palsy. And uh, they did give me some antiviral medicine and some steroids. Um, like I said, I noticed a little bit of change, but um, I know that God is going to do this and that I'll be fully restored. Um, and that's, you know, that, that 
I, I'm not accepting anything less than what God has for me. And so that's, that's it. And so I just continue pressing on. Yesterday he tried with me, excuse me, he tried with me trying to get me to believe that, you know, nobody's going to want to have someone with a crooked face minister or um, speak to them or marry them. And I'm like, um, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, this is a temporary thing. This is an attack of the enemy. I know fully it is. I, I've had prophetic words about it. So it's on. It's not going to be staying here. Hey, Danielle. It ain't staying. It's not. Uh, this is not my portion. This is not what. Um, this is not what God has for me. Uh, at this point in time, the enemy is trying. He's trying to shut me up. Trying to get me to believe lies, and I just am not going to do it. I refuse. And so, you know, I, uh, we have to... Hey, how are you? Do I know you? No, I sure don't. But hi, welcome to The Scope. So glad you joined. Okay, great. So, you know, what we have to understand, and so this is kind of the, the principles that have been just rolling around in my head, and I just, you know, this, and you know what, to be honest with you, some of these principles are things that you don't have to be a Christian to exercise. Now, I am a Christian, I, uh, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that is my portion. But when, when you are faced with a diagnosis, uh, when someone goes into the doctor and they're told that they have cancer, hey Deborah, um, when they're told that they have, you know, whatever, Lyme's disease, when they're told that they have lupus, when they're told that they have some type of debilitating disease like muscular dystrophy or multiple sclerosis or whatever, um, there are some things that we can do to help ourselves. One of those things is to not allow that diagnosis to define us. Yes, we might have to do things differently. Oh, diabetes is another one, too. Uh, I, was I was diagnosed with that in 2016. But I'm not letting it define me. I'm not accepting it. I know that, uh, that there are some things that I am not doing that I need to be doing. And once I start doing those things, that diagnosis is going to go away. But the fact remains that we have a responsibility to do our part and part of that is having a positive attitude speaking positivity not allowing uh the diagnosis or what was spoken over you become something that you own now you know i'm not talking about name it blame it name it claim it blab it grab it i'm talking about speaking what the truth is yes i was diagnosed with bell's, bell's palsy on monday yes you can tell However, healing is my portion, and our words have power. And e even if you are not a Christian, your words still have power. I was talking with a friend of mine yesterday, and or maybe it was the day before, and I said, you know, if, if you continue to speak negatively, then you will have negative outcomes. I'm not saying that you can sit here and say, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. Well, you might be able to say that, and it might happen, but I'm, I'm speaking of when you have a negative situation in your life, speaking the positive instead of the circumstance, saying things, or not saying anything at all. Who says that you have to say it? You know what I mean? Like, why, why, do, you have, why do you insist on speaking negative things? I was diagnosed with Bell's palsy. I am healed. I am not going to say that that is mine or that I have it because I don't and it's not. What I am saying is that I am healed and as God heals me, whether it's a miraculous thing, when it happens, like if I wake up in the morning and it's all together normal and I can take that side by side picture and say three days ago this was my face, now this is my face, I'm giving glory and honor to God, or if it is, you know, if it takes some time. Here's the beautiful part about it. What we need to understand is that 
regardless of whether or not it is an instantaneous miracle or it's a healing that's done over time. The miracle or the 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 part that's important is that you keep the faith. The part that's important is that you stay positive. The part that's important is that you don't allow what's been said to you or over you become something that defines you and, and, and that it doesn't spill into every part of your life and poison it. Now, I very well could have, on Monday, when that happened, just completely went the other direction. Or I should say on Friday when that happened. I could have completely went the other direction. I could have talked myself into a stroke, maybe. I mean, I don't know. But we don't realize that our words have power. We don't take that seriously at all. And it, yes, it, it can be a, a God thing. You can speak the word of God and that can be a good tool for you. But even if you're not a Christian... What does it hurt you to speak positively and shut up about the negative? What does it hurt you? I'm waiting. There is no pain in not speaking a negative situation or speaking about a negative situation. You know what I'm saying, Deborah? I mean, come on. You just gotta understand that... that Jesus died for sins and sicknesses and diseases, and he paid for all of that. But while our body is lining up, we still have to stand in faith, and we still have to have our words lining up with his word, or our words being positive. Now, whether or not we have given our lives to Jesus, that's a matter, that's a personal matter. That's not something that I'm going to sit here and say that, you know, that having a positive attitude... You know, another thing too, and I, this is a little sidebar, but when, when you have um, uh, the, the laws in the Bible, talking about like the laws of sowing and reaping, what you sow, that you will also reap. Well, you don't have to be a Christian for that to be true. There are plenty of baseball players and football players that give to charities and all that kind of stuff, and they're blessed because they give. Because they sow seed. Because they give sacrificially. And so God blesses them in return. The laws of sowing and reaping apply whether you're a Christian or not. You just understand them when you're a Christian. You know? And, and it, it, we just need to understand that our words are powerful. They're powerful. And until we get a hold of that, until that becomes our reality, we're going to keep speaking negatively over situations, and then oh, okay, I see you, um, Martina, I see you, uh, but you know. Where is, where is it stated that we have to articulate negativity? Hello, God called you to... Thanks for joining. Where is it stated? What is the rule? Is there a rule? Is there a rule that says we have to talk about negative things? Is there a rule that if something negative happens, we have to talk about it? I don't believe so. I am 45 years old that I've never seen that rule anywhere. It's never been something that I have ever seen or believed. Now, I have been a negative speaker and a negative talker. I have been someone who spoke the negative circumstances. And you know what? It made me miserable. So why, you know, the Bible says, and I'm sorry for those of you who are not Christians, you'll just have to, to deal with this for right this moment. But the Bible says, promises, in this world you will have trouble. So he's already promised, he's already stated that there's going to be trouble. Because the enemy 
roars around, walks around, seeking whom he may devour. He, he's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. He's coming to cause havoc and mayhem in your life. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome them all. And he's given us the ability to overcome as well. But with the trouble that's already promised, why would I want my, li my, my life to be more miserable because I'm speaking a negative situation? And here's the thing. When the, when the enemy comes and lies, like for instance yesterday, tried to come to me and tell me that I would, that there was no hope for me. That there was no hope for me to get married and have kids. That there was no hope for me being in, to be in ministry. Because of this right here. Because of this diagnosis, which is temporary by the way. Now I could have bought into that. I could have. Because I have a choice. When I'm faced with a situation or a circumstance, I have a choice. I'm sorry. The, the eye randomly waters. I'm not really crying. So I'm just... I mean, I felt that right there, but I'm just saying, like... It's like I have no control over my tear duct. And so when this one waters, then this one waters. They just can't do it. <laughs> you have to understand that I ha we, we have a choice. When you're faced with a diagnosis, when you're faced with a situation, when you're faced with a broke marriage, when you're faced with abuse, when you're faced with death, you have a choice. You have a choice. And that choice is, am I going to sit here in, in the muck? Am I going to sit here in the mud? Am I going to sit here like a turtle stuck in peanut butter, like, like Real Talk Kim says? Or am I going to get some help? Am I going to go to my brothers and my sisters and I'm going to say, I need you to lift me up? Am I going to go to my friends and my family and I'm going to say, I need some prayer? Can you agree with me, please? When we have a situation and a circumstance that God gives us the choice, we have free will. I could choose to accept this and it would be this way for the rest of my life. Or I can choose to speak positively and speak the word and line up with the word and command my body to line up with the word. And in doing so, putting myself in a position where I can receive that healing. But if I speak the negative, if I choose the other option, then I'm going to be stuck this way for the rest of my life. Or longer than I should. The choice is yours. It, exactly. For those of you who are just joining, and I never even introduced myself, I'm, my name is Stacy. And I just come on every now and then to encourage and share a word. And I was diagnosed with Bell's palsy on Monday. And um, there's been some challenges. The enemy's really been fighting me. But here's the thing. I have a choice of whether or not I'm going to listen to the lies and, and take them as my own. Or if I'm going to expose his lies and speak the truth. And the thing of it is, is that you break, you break the power of sin and the power of the enemy and his lies when you expose them and then speak the truth. The fact is, this side of my face is droopy right now. I have a crooked smile. It's temporary. And the enemy fought me getting on here tonight too. But you know what? The word still has to go forth. God still, there still are people that need encouragement. There still are people that need to know that the choice is yours. You can choose 
whether or not you want to speak positively or negatively, whether you want to buy into the lies of the enemy or you want to take hold of what God has freely given in the death, burial, and resurrection of his son. The choice is yours. And, you know, and so I made the choice that I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care what, what Satan tries to lie to me about. I don't even care what my own thoughts. You know, sometimes our own thoughts are not things that we need to uh, take hold. We need to take ca take them captive. Any thought that rises against, uh, uh, what's that scripture? Casting down every imagination. Anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Every thought. So whether it's our thought or if it's a lie of the enemy that's coming in, we need to assess it and let the peace of God act like an umpire and say what's out and what's safe. And when the peace of God comes in and helps us understand that the... Um, the things that are safe... Don't disrupt your peace. The things that are safe don't disrupt your peace. And so what we need to understand is the choice is ours. If I get out of my peace, it's my own choice. It's your own choice. Peace is a choice. Staying in your peace, peace is a fruit, but it also is your choice. Just like love is a choice. Just like joy is a choice. Just like self-control is a choice. Any fruit of the Spirit, all of them, you have a choice whether you're going to operate in them or not. And so, that is, I guess, what God wanted to say tonight. <laughs> and believe me, getting on here and doing this, looking at myself, looking like this was the right choice because I need to I need to know and I need myself to know that it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So anyway, I just am glad that you guys all came in and supported me and um I am so thankful for you all, and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your evening. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Bye.